Okay, uh, yeah. only about an hour and a half has gone by. <laughs> this is my rough sketch. This is my measure twice sketch, measure three times sketch. Uh, I'm going to explain to you what I did here, Alan, because a lot of things are on slopes. <laughs> I won't make a joke about that. Anyhow, the middle piece. There's a middle piece, and then of course, the middle piece, and then of course, these side pieces, and then you got the front, and then you got the bottom plate. So you see what I'm talking about? That's the middle piece right here, and this of course is the tri this shape here, which you will get your angle once you, you know, put once you get the distance here, and you cut put these two cuts and then or lines, and then cut that'll give you your slope. Now, I'm not going to give any measurements because I'm going to I'm going to scan this and send it to you. But you can see here, okay, the middle piece lines up just like that, okay, where the slot is. That's where the middle piece lines up, right where the the tip of the uh, where the board where the control panel sits on here. It slides up into that. Mine's screwed up, but that's where it goes. Okay. As it comes down to the front panel, I don't, I'm sure you can see it. The front panel has been beveled or sloped as well. So what I have done is I've measured from this point to this point. See, it's actually they've they've dovetailed this as well or notched it out. So I only measured to the back of this wood. I didn't continue to here because you don't want to make this joint. This fuck off, you know. You make, and also you don't need to make this beveled out, leveled section, okay? What you do is cut your piece of wood according to my measurements up until that point. Make your wood the thickness that I've given you. And what I've done as for the height, what's going to happen is you're going to cut this flush. And, and because it's a little bit higher here than it is in the front, it's going to be... It's going to be meeting up with this, only it's, going to, only it's going to be a little bit lower. Um, you see what I'm saying? It's going to be a little bit lower, but then by the time you reach out here, the slope will just touch the edge. Get me? Okay. So this measurement here is actually what's in the front. That's the back measurement. So I measured the front measurement. If you draw a straight line across, you can you get your slope. You know what I mean? So there'll be a little gap there, so what? You don't see it. So, like I said, I've measured from the, the, the nice orange stuff here. Forget this in the back. So when, you, and you're measured up to here. So when you put your piece in place, it'll be flush from this point out. Actually, it'll be a little bit lower. It'll be, you know, so, <laughs> I, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Uh, oh boy, I'm a freaking perfectionist. Okay, there's the angle coming down of the piece of wood, right? And your board in the front is going to be like that. So the angle will go from there to there. You know what I mean? If if you made it higher, it would you would run into problems with hitting there, but you won't. You're going to end up with a gap. Anyhow, just do it like that and you'll be fine. Now there's the bottom piece here. I got gave you all the measurements for that too. That's the bottom piece right here. And it is also beveled, which I didn't include. What it is, I measured from the inside to the back of here. So you cut your piece so that it's resting against this, not being sitting in a beveled out section like, like that on the bottom. And then of course you have your piece here which it's sitting almost flush on. Actually, the piece in the front is made out of a weird type of material. Um, it warped a bit, but uh, yeah. So I'll give you the measurement from the back wall out. Okay, it's so it is, as you can see here, it is resting against the back. It's not dovetailed into, into it. And of course, this piece here sits on top. See, this piece sits on top of this plate. 
I mean, you can't go wrong. If you, that's probably why they did it this way. If you cut this plate to the proper measurement, and you you get your measurement up to the top of your uh, coin door plate, and then of course you add the, this. You add this. Um, you don't have to add it first, but or I would, but add it first, and then you cut your plate and just rest your plate on top while you got this, you know, in place as well. But uh, you know, it all comes to a square here, so you can't go wrong. So you need a level, just level this part, and don't worry about what's going on up top. It'll take care of itself after you cut it. And then when you go to put your middle piece in, you can make it your middle piece which I've cut out all the diagrams and I already explained to you in the first video how I did it. I'm not a master woodman, but I managed to figure out a way of doing it with a skill saw. And it is the exact same size as a 2x4, which is a bonus. You know, exact same size, just beauty. And uh, give me a cross section. Yeah, exact same size. Um, I know it looks like there's two pieces. Someone will say, oh, you take two pieces that are glued together. And I'm like, no, that's one solid piece. It's just because they put this fancy black um, laminate stuff on it or arborite or I don't know what the hell they call that stuff. Um, melamine or malamu or whatever. It's just plastic covering up the wood. It makes it look nice. So there you go, Alan. I'm going to scan this and I'll send it out to you. I don't know what else you want to see. Um, you get your coin door, your box, which you really don't need. I mean, you can build, just throw a box in there. You don't need to build a box. Uh, I'm pretty sure you have the measurements for this box anyhow. And of course, uh, this box, this box is sitting at a certain height from the floor, da -de -da -de -de. This piece here, you may or may not put it put in, but it can be put in after the monitor's put in, so you can get the angle or distance from the monitor. I actually, believe it or not, when I put the monitor in, um, how did I do that? I actually took this piece out. It was stapled in the corners um, on my other machine. And when the monitor, monitor sitting sideways, but when it was sitting vertical, I had to get this out so I could get this bar off. Yeah, I actually cap, fixed the cap while the monitor was still in the machine. And it's really, it was, it's not that big of a deal to take the monitor out. But it was only the one cap, so. And I just first got the machine and I was hyper. <laughs> they managed to leave the Donkey Kong Jr. power supply in here. Um, that sticker came with the conversion kit. The conversion kit also says uh, there's the one up for uh, MGS one up, and then up here is DJR one up. So that's the original Donkey Kong Jr. serial number. And then and then when you converted it, you were supposed to add the second plate. I guess because it would mean this three thousand dollar machine. Uh, what, by looking at this you would know that this machine is this machine and it was converted to that machine another three thousand dollar machine I don't know it's so really the ownership to a car going to a scrapyard and the VIN number ending up somewhere else <laughs> it used to be great in the 70s you can't do that no more um, that's it speaker's pretty big man and that PDF file I sent you of the speaker grill, I guarantee you, 100%, if you print it out, it will come out to the exact same size as that. You know, and you can measure from there if you haven't already done it. They got these nice little pieces, which I would put in after you set your, your basil in there, not before. And then you got the metal bracket here. It's screwed in and it doubles as a marquee holder and a uh, holder for that. That that piece right there 
goes all the way to the back and there's a screw back there. You unscrew, you're, you're, you're supposed to unscrew it and slide this back out of the way and then when you put the the um, basil in, the basil drops down into that slot and what it does is it leaves a five millimeter slot up there and then you're supposed to push this forward and it just it jams underneath or I should say jams on top of that so it prevents you from sliding it up because you can't slide it up and pull it out of the slot no more which not too many people know how to do that anyhow the arcade days are gone but kids were little bastards back then um, there's also this support piece of wood in the back um, I'll tell you what I'll measure that because I'm not going to measure the thickness of it, that's not so important, but what I will measure is from, from the back of this to here, so that way that will give you a distance for this bottom plate and where this is going to go. Um, yeah, I think that would be good. I would put the bottom plate in, I wouldn't screw that in place. What I would do is those two screws in the back where the monitor sits here. I can give you the plot the plot for this. Then you stick your monitor in. Okay, attach it from here. And and then uh, and then you can adjust it up and down. Well that won't work either. I don't know. Good luck. <laughs> but here you go. This is definitely helpful.